Hello and welcome to this Pivotal Container Service demonstration video. Today we'll be deploying PKS on Amazon Web Services. I'm Dan Basket, Tech Marketing for Pivotal Software. To prepare for the demo, I pre-installed Pivotal Operations Manager and I uploaded the Pivotal Container Service tile. If we hit the plus sign, it prepares the tile for installation. Now we can move on to some AWS prerequisites. We need to create a couple roles and policies so the Kubernetes will be able to create objects within AWS. The policies can be found within the PKS documentation. We'll create a PKS master policy. This will control the ability of the master node to create Kubernetes objects. And we'll create a worker policy. And this will allow the worker nodes to actually create objects. We'll need to create a couple roles associated with those policies. We'll create a master role, assign a master policy. And we'll also create a PKS worker role and assign the worker policy. Now we can check our roles and we'll see that we have the appropriate PKS master role and the PKS worker role. Next, we want to create a load balancer for the PKS control plane. This will be used to access the PKS API. The PKS API server hasn't been created yet, so we'll just create the front end of this load balancer. We'll specify ports 8443 and 9021 for the UAA server and the PKS API, the proper zones, and we'll configure a target group. And this will be where we register the host once it's created. So we create that load balancer. And once it's created, we want to create a CNAME entry in our DNS so that we can access that load balancer via a much easier name. We'll copy it and then move over to DNS within AWS. And we'll add a CNAME entry. In this case, api.pks.pivotaldemo.net. We'll associate that with our DNS name of the load balancer. Now we can start our PKS installation. We click the tile and we'll be asked to enter some AZ and network information. We can select this and then I've pre-created some networks that we'll use. And then we'll move on to the PKS API. We'll generate a self-signed certificate so we can do HTTPS within our PKS domain. And then we'll enter the PKS API host name. And this is the short name that you assign via CNAME inside DNS. Next, we're going to create the three plans that are available to our Kubernetes operators. These plans will vary in number of nodes, size of the nodes, and they'll be offered within the PKS CLI for users to create their own clusters. So with our first plan, we're going to make a small one master, three worker node configuration and make it all within one availability zone. Our second plan will go a little bigger. In this case, we'll do three master nodes and six worker nodes. We'll increase the size of both the nodes and we'll spread those across the three availability zones that we have available. And our third and final plan will make even larger. In this case, we'll have our three masters. And we'll go with 15 worker nodes for an 18 node cluster. Once again, making the nodes a little bit larger and spreading across the three availability zones. Okay. 
Next, we'll select AWS as our cloud provider. And this is where we'll enter the roles that we created in the earlier step. So our master and worker roles. We have some other options that we don't really need to deal with in this installation. Logging, ch changing our network interface type. Our UAA configuration. If we want to integrate with Wavefront. And usage data. This will allow VMware and Pivotal to collect telemetry data about the installation. So I'm selecting yes there. And then using our defaults on our errands to run, which is our configurations. From a resource config perspective, we will go with the defaults. We drop back out to our dashboard and click apply changes. Now our installation will continue. And I've compressed time here so that it'll go a little quicker, but we can watch it complete. Once that's complete, click return to dashboard and PKS has been installed. Now if I move back over to AWS, take a look at the instance manager and we'll see the Pivotal Container Service instance is now running. And now we need to add that PKS master to our load balancer target group. So we go into the PKS API target group, edit and say add the registered instance. Save that. And now create another target group In this case, we'll do our UAA port 8443. And we'll also connect the PKS master instance to that target group. We check the load balancer and we see both of those created. We'll also need to edit the 8443 port to make sure it forwards to the proper target group. So once that's updated, we then want to open firewall ports for the PKS master as well. So we know which ports. We need to go to the proper security group which is the, in my case, the PKS VM security group. We'll edit and we'll add the 8443 for UAA and 9021 for the PKS API. Once that's complete, we can move on to some command line. First thing I want to do is test out the 8443 and 9021 port to make sure that I can get through. So I'm just telnetting there using the UAAC command line. I can log in as admin. I can get that credential via the PKS tile. Go to the credentials, PKS UAA I'm an admin login. Now I can create a PKS admin user. Give it a password and then add it to the PKS cluster admin group. Once that's complete, I can move on to creating a cluster. The first step in creating cluster is creating a load balancer for the Kubernetes API server. So the same process as before. I'll call this PKS, give it the name of the cluster I want to create. I want to load balance port 8443. Select the proper network and availability zone. Create a target pool. And just like last time, since the server is not created yet, we don't have to attach it to the target pool. 
But once we create the load balancer, we can go back to the command line. On the command line, we're going to use the PKS CLI. First, we'll log in, giving it the name of the API server and our login we created in the last step. We can take a look at the plans and the create cluster command. We can create a cluster, give it a name, the name of the load balancer we created in the last step, and the size of the cluster we want to create. Once the process is started, we can use the PKS cluster command to monitor the process, and we wait for the cluster to create, unless you happen to have a time stone laying around to speed up the process. And look, our cluster is magically finished creation. If we take a look in the AWS UI, we'll see that our nodes have been created. So I have a master and three worker nodes. You can look at it in this view, or if I look in the tags, I can grab the service instance tag and sort. And now we see the master and three workers. Now we can use the PKS command line to access the cluster credentials, so we can use kubectl to get some information on the cluster. So we'll run a couple of kubectls, we'll get the nodes. And we'll see what pods are running in the namespaces. You can also take a look at the Kubernetes dashboard by giving it a kubectl proxy command, which proxies the dashboard to our local host and accessing the dashboard URL. Pass our kube config file. And we can take a look in the dashboard at the same information we were getting from the command line, but in a graphical layout. Now to test the cluster, I'm going to install Concourse CI via Helm chart. So first thing we need to do is set up Helm. We'll pass an RBAC config to Kubernetes to create our Tiller service account. Then we initialize Helm passing it that Tiller service account. Next we want to set up a storage class that will leverage AWS persistent disks. And we'll create that storage class within Kubernetes. And then we'll install our Helm chart. And we'll pass that a perimeter to tell it where to use that storage class. In this case, the persistent disk for our Postgres database. And Helm starts the install. So if we look back into the Kubernetes UI, and we'll look at the overview, we'll see things starting to kick up. First thing we notice, though, is that our web interface is having trouble connecting. So if we go back to the CLI, we'll see that Concourse gave us some instructions on how to forward the port for the user interface. So we'll cut and paste that so that we're now forwarding the 8080 port. And now we can browse to that URL. It's on our local host. And we'll see the concourse UI. If I log in, yep, and everything's working fine. Now if I go back into the Kubernetes UI, I'll see things have started up and are now green. See our storage class our persistent volume claims. So we'll see that the persistent volumes were created for our database. So if I look in the AWS UI, I can also see here that the block storage is created for those persistent volume claims. And that's PKS being deployed on Amazon Web Services. Thank you.